The COVID-19 pandemic has increased calls for a basic income program. Proponents say it would protect Canadians from financial challenges, especially as the Canada Emergency Response Benefit is set to expire in October. The Parliamentary Budget Office estimates that a pilot program could cost at least $47.5 billion. Yuan Pao Wu is an independent senator from British Columbia, and he joins us now from Ottawa. Sir, thank you so much for making time for us this morning. Good morning. You've said that now is the right time to try out a basic income program. Why is now the right time? Because the recovery from COVID is going to be uh, sluggish, probably, and possibly very erratic as well, which will create a need for further income support. The question is, what kind of income support? As you mentioned, CERB is coming to an end very soon. We could fall back on the traditional programs, EI and so on, but we found that there were many gaps in that program. Uh, with the groundswell of interest in basic income and with the need for some kind of income support, this is time to pilot some kind of basic income scheme, perhaps at the provincial level, first and foremost, to provide the income support that is needed, but secondly, to test basic income uh, to see if it in fact produces all the benefits that its proponents have been touting. I want to talk about those benefits in just a moment, but first get some idea from you, some clarification as to how exactly a basic income <clears throat> program would work in Canada. Well, it would provide 75% uh, of what's called the low income cutoff to uh, Canadians. That amounts to about 18,000 for a single person and about 24, 25,000 for a couple. Uh, that income would be provided in full, and then as you earn more money, it would be reduced until uh, it goes to zero at some uh, level of uh, income. Um, it goes to everyone, uh, and it is a guaranteed income so that people don't have to worry about uh, whether they get it or not. And uh, an important part of the, yes. Well, I wanted to ask you because you said the, the benefits of this. What, in your mind, are the benefits of having a system like this? Well, the security of income, first and foremost, uh, that takes away the burden and the fear of um, uh, not having uh, income to support yourself, to pay for the rent, to pay for food and so on. And it's particularly important in the case of vulnerable persons, um, a lot, lot of uh, First Nations communities, uh, racialized persons, uh, inner city people, and people who are in precarious work. We know that we are entering an economy that uh, increasingly has um, an emphasis on jobs that are transitory, that do not have uh, benefits and which can disappear at uh, the blink of an eye. COVID-19, of course, was an extreme example of how uh, vulnerability has affected many Canadians and basic income would address that kind of insecurity. Senator Wu, you know that people are going to push back on this. While there may be benefits for so many in this country to have a universal program like that, it's going to come at a cost, a very big cost, according to the Parliamentary Budget Office, which estimated that it's at least $47.5 million and could go up to $100 billion. So we're talking... Either way, we're talking about billions, and there's a projection of $343 billion of a deficit for this year. So are we really in a position in this country to even test a program like that? Well, first of all, the PBO came up with estimates of the gross cost of uh, basic income, but they also came up with the cost of potential fiscal offsets. In other words, programs that could be scaled back or eliminated to pay for basic income. And they found that these offsets could be as much as $46 billion. So I think the net cost of a basic income would be much, much less than the uh, headline figure that you cited. Uh, and furthermore, there would be benefits, I believe, that would go beyond the monetary value of basic income to individuals. A lot of um, research has suggested that basic income would improve uh, health outcomes, it would improve the educational prospects of the recipients uh, and broader benefits uh, to the society. So I think we shouldn't be afraid of a basic income if we are willing to look at the possibility of offsetting some of those costs. 
by reducing benefits in other areas, benefits which I should say tend to, ben to uh, privilege people who are at the higher end of the income spectrum rather than lower income people. Are you talking there about tax relief uh, programs? I'm talking about tax credits, uh, refundable tax and non-refundable tax credits, which uh, typically benefit individuals who are at a higher level of income because they are able to use up those tax credits. These are non-refundable credits. Uh, people at the lower end of the income spectrum cannot use them up and therefore waste the tax credits. Um, and many of these tax credits are provided on a kind of a boutique basis. A basic income would, in some senses, take care of many of these um, objectives in a blanket fashion. Uh, and we would be able to then reduce or eliminate altogether the credits that uh, are what you might call redundant. That would pay for a lot of the cost of basic income. Senator Wu, I'm being told in my ear that we're going to run out of time soon. So I do want to get a, uh, at least one more question in, which is we sometimes hear about the argument that having a universal basic income would remove incentive for people to work, to have other employment, that it would remove a sense of ambition and drive for people. Do you find that that is the case? First of all, basic income is set at uh, below the poverty line, 75 percent. It's not by any means a luxurious uh, lifestyle or amount of money. And secondly, the design of the program can very well allow for a very minimal uh, deduction rate so that additional income earned would only be uh, clawed back at a very low level. This is not the case, for example, with the CRB, where any dollar you earn over $1,000 um, eliminates you <clears throat> from receiving the CRB. So there are ways in which we can design basic income so that the uh, disincentive to work is dramatically reduced. And very quickly, sir, are you seeing that there is support for this idea in Canada right now? There is a huge discussion on basic income across the country, and uh, yes, a lot of support. <clears throat> and a lot of that is coming because um, we've seen that during the COVID crisis, the shutdown, uh, that <clears throat> there's a determination on the part of uh, Canadians and politicians of all stripes to make sure that no one is left behind. I think that's opened the door to a fresh discussion on our social safety net system, on our social compact, if you will. And basic income should be one of those options that we consider for how we remake our social security system. Okay, sir, we will have to leave it there. Senator, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Senator Yuen Pao Wu joining us from Ottawa. Hi, I'm Floyd, the founder of UBI Works. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe to our channel. We make a lot of videos about basic income, and your support will allow us to reach more Canadians to show that basic income works.